Sooner Scoop HD. Do you have any idea on the, the status of like, if Grant Sharple's going to take the court tomorrow? Yep, he's, he's going to, he'll be here. He just missed one day for his grandfather's funeral. But he'll be, he'll be playing. What I wanted to ask you about uh, one of your new assistants, Matt Brady. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the players have referred to him as the shot doctor. <laughs> how much he's been working with them on their jump shots. Just, what did you like about him bringing him in? And, and what have you seen from him in terms of working with the players? Well, I've known Matt for many years in the profession. And he's one of those guys that, like, you know, you'd go to an AU event and you'd, you'd watch different courts, different things. And every time Matt and I ended up watching the same court, it ended up, next thing you know, we're sitting next to each other talking ball. So him and I have talked ball for, for years. Um, and, you know, I just think he brings a wealth of experience. Um, he's been a head coach. I, I love having that experience that he's sat in my seat before. Um, and, uh, and also it gives you, I think with this transfer portal, it gives you another region of guys where he, and Matt's, Matt's been in it so long, he's got contacts all over. And so um, he gives you a veteran guy with a lot of recruiting contacts as well. And he loves working out with players. I mean, he's a, you know, sometimes you get to a certain age and like they say working out the, the player developments for young guys. And um, Matt's one of those guys I love because I'm old school the same way. Is, is he's, he, he likes being on the floor working with the players and he does a very good job with it. Shot doctor, is that, a, is that an accurate nickname? I will, after the season, I'll let you know after the season. <laughs> no, but I, I think the guys have been working on me. Right out of the gate, we, we, we videotaped Jalen Hill's shot. We identified there. And what Matt does is he's just, he just, he's really good mentally, too, with the guys. You know, m mentally with the shooting. Um, he tweaks you. And so, um, yeah, I think he does a really good job working with shooters. Really good job. Billy Clark. Uh, it was a walk on a Loyola for me. He's a <laughs> fun player, one of my favorites. He, he was telling me about a conversation that you had with Brad Stevens um, before he left for the Celtics. Um, I guess you and Brad had kind of talked about buy-in and how that really changed your philosophy on that. Um, I don't know if you remember that conversation. If you do, kind of walk me through it. Where were you? What was said? And how did that change your philosophy on buy-in? Oh, my philosophy on buy-in? Um, I don't know if it changed my philosophy on buy-in, but it just... It, uh, I mean, I'll tell you, the, the origin of the story was we, we were playing at Butler, and I was sitting there, and we were doing our shoot-around, and the guys were shooting, and I just was staring at the, at, the, at, the, um, at the banners, and it had, like, championships in the early 70s, and then it had a gap of, like, 30 years, and all of a sudden there was, all of a sudden there was a flush. And I just said to my staff, I go, something happened. Some coaching staff came in, and the whole, the whole thing started. I said, we've got to be that for Loyola. And, uh, and then I went out to Boston, and I called Brad, and I went out to Boston. I said, can I just hang around for two days? And so I went out there, and we visited a long time there. And, um, you know, just about, you know, you achieve what you emphasize. Just as the head coach, you've got to be, you know, your standards, everything, about getting guys, recruiting guys that are about what you want. And that was at, at Loyola, just recruiting that in here. And I, I, just, I feel that to bring the story full to, to, to this team, um, the five guys that, that are returned completely bought in, are completely all in. They're, I mean, both Groves, Jalen, Bijan, and CJ, everything this summer was, uh, was really good. Um, and then, and I think the newcomers, if, if, if we recruited guys that I really felt that fit us. So, um, yeah, I think, I, think, I think this group is, you know, now we, we, got, a way, we got a whole journey now. This whole journey right now, we've got to be a program of getting better. Um, and where we are today is not going to be where we are in January and February. Um, but uh, I, this group has been really good about being all in this summer and everything. Do you think this is the earliest you can play an exhibition before the season feels? I don't know. I don't know. It just kind of, the, the, just putting the dates together, like we got their scrimmage set first because that was kind of a, a deal that we set first, then you had to go, then you had to make a decision. You can do the scrimmage, before, or you can do the, the X-Men before or after. And we just decided if we do it after, it was just going to start bumping up to the Sam Houston State game too much. So we said, this was kind of a neat opportunity, though, to get a scrimmage under a belt and then see what we could do better and everything. Now, you, now we're going to play uh, high-level games Saturday. And uh, 
So it, it, it just became that that first the, the scrimmage got date got set because of availability of both our schedules, facility, and everything, and um, that got set first. And then it was just a matter of so. Yeah, I think it is. I, I think a lot of people are doing secret, the scrimmages already. I, I've looked around. Uh, I think Nebraska just did an exhibition with Shadron. Uh, we had that on our radar because we played them early. So it's uh, it's just kind of your schedule. So I'm just excited to get – just see where we're at and play someone different, just to guard somebody different, to execute against someone different. And I know Coach Barakoff's an outstanding coach. He's got national championships. He's done – he's really an outstanding coach. And this rivalry has been a rivalry before. I mean, Coach Tubbs used to play it. Um, back in the day, I mean, Abe Levins used to be there. So um, I thought it would be interesting to uh, to kind of have this matchup um, this this year. And you got to take this group to, to Europe, mm -hmm. see them in practice, and this will be the first of those two scrimmages, and getting that momentum going. What are you going to be looking for tomorrow night? Carry over, like like who, who's going to carry over what we've been doing in practice into the game. Because that's the whole that's the whole key is is all the things we're teaching defensively, light goes off. Who's concentrating? Who's going to be where they need to be when we ice? Who's going to be continue to check out? Who's going to be on point on our transition D? Who's going to ex execute carry over uh, what we've been working on offensively? Because there's always a, there's an amount of game slippage, so I'm, I'm just looking to see who, the, the least amount of game slippage. And the second thing is just a, I'd be shocked if we didn't compete. They, they, I'd be shocked because this group is playing really hard. They're competing. Um, they're, they have an energy to them. I think you're going to see an energy. So I'm looking for that. But I, um, I'm, so it's the, the, the carryover is, is the biggest one. Do you have any idea on um, a starting lineup or rotation or is that something you're going to try, try to figure out uh, tomorrow? Yeah, we're, we haven't set that yet. I mean, we've just kind of, kind of been playing a lot of guys and practices. Um, so um, we think we know what we're going to do tomorrow. But um, it's uh, nothing set for like this is what it's going to be for the opening thing. We we rotated it in Europe, but uh, I don't know. I, I feel like I, I feel pretty good. I think I know what I'm going to do tomorrow. Porter, we know the transfer portal, name, image, likeness. That's not going away. So how much fun is it for these months ahead? Just be focused on basketball. Oh, Bob, that's it's my favorite part of my job. Um, <laughs> is uh, is the practice, coaching, skilled, all that stuff, and. Um, I do. I am a guy, I'm a coach that I do like recruiting. I do because I, I I'm hungry to get the right players in here and build the program. So I'm not. I don't loathe recruiting at all. Um, there's a lot of dynamics of recruiting that are very tough right now. That's that. But gosh, I just can't wait to just to compete to to to, to get better. To you know, because then we're gonna we're gonna walk away from the scrimmage and, and hopefully have some takeaways. You know, and, and with there. But I think um, I think is. I can't say, you know, the, the players are always the ones that are dying right now. They really want to play somebody different. Coaches are too, but um, I'm excited for them to, to, to see and to see their carryover, to see what we're doing. But um, it's going to be fast. It's going to be quick. I mean, it's going to be like Tuesday, Saturday, and the next thing you know, we're going to be talking about Sam Houston. It's, it's, it's going to – and, uh, and that's the way the season goes. It's it just before you know it, it's, it's on, a, on a roller coaster. So very, very – hyped and excited that we're getting on right now. Um, you may have gotten this question already last time you spoke about Ryan Humphrey adding him to your staff. Yeah. It's important about him and what you like about him as a coach and how important about to get somebody who has that OU DNA. Yeah. So the, <clears throat> it was about all the – everything above you just said it was uh, – to getting – you know, Ryan, I've known him in the profession. Um, I've – you know, I've, we have a, a, my college coach, Tony Brony, that's how we kind of first got connected. He was with them at the Grizzlies when Ryan was there. And <clears throat> then I'd see him on the road, and not a lot of people thought he'd leave Notre Dame, but he's been at the highest level in the ACC at Notre Dame. And, um, and then when, when they started becoming, talking about it, I didn't think he'd leave. And then to get him, he's from Oklahoma. And already sitting here listening to him talk to Oklahoma kids about staying home and what the state of Oklahoma means to him. And also we can talk to him about he's everywhere they're going to go. They want to go. He's been, done, he's been at every stop. He's played at the highest level in college. He's been in the NBA for three years. He's played overseas at the top levels, overseas. And he's another resource. And he's great on the floor. You know, I see him working with our big guys. And he's, he's a guy that's been, um, that, that played that position, that, that can talk to him about little nuances. And, but he is an A-plus human being. 
and the way he talks about Oklahoma. And I'll just the, the, the thing that he resonated with me is he kept on just saying, I feel like I just got unfinished business at Oklahoma. Because when I really came out here the first time, I wanted to win a champ, national championship. And he goes, now as a coach, to have this opportunity, um, it's just, I just think it's really a perfect fit for us. And then real quick, you mentioned the, the trickle down and the, the carryover, I guess. Uh, how much further are you guys ahead from that Euro trip than you would be if you hadn't taken it right now? Oh, I've got to think we're, we're definitely ahead. Just the extra practice time, um, implementing the defense, I mean, uh, implementing different things offensively. Um, and, and just being able to, like, like tomorrow night's not going to be the first time that we're going to have immediate timeout in a, in a game where, where I'm, I'm going to coach a guy on the fly. Because sometimes you got to, not sometimes, there's a lot of coaching on the fly, making a quick adjustment. Hey, on this action, make sure you flip this. There's, it's not the first time. We just had three games of that. I think Grant and I, the newcomers, you know, Los, um, it's not the first time that we're going to be in a, in a game setting. Now, there's going to be more of a crowd. There's going to be more of... A lot of home dynamics, family in the stands, and all that. So that's always, but that's why, that's what you do it. But we're 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 definitely. I mean, just by sheer practice time, they've got to be ahead um, going to going on that trip. Would you mind promise Chris Beard didn't send me, but then we'll see how you roll it out tomorrow night. But this will be our first chance to see Grant and Joe play together. And in terms of complementary parts, what will the backcourt of those two look like? So <clears throat> both of them. Have, have scored at a, at a good clip at the at this level, um, and I think that uh, you know Joe is Joe's more of a wing. You know, um, I think Joe really can get our transition game going. He's very good in transition. He's a very good rebounder, cutter. He's a shot maker. Um, he's a scorer. Joe, there's not a shot that Joe doesn't think he can make, and I love that about him. Great scorers have that way. Um, but uh, and then Grant. Grant really controls the tempo. I mean, he really is really good off ball screens. He's really good at making other guys better, but also he's, he can score. Um, he can uh, score in bunches. Um, he, I think in this league, um, it's so good defensively that they take you out of so many things that you need what we call a shot clock guy. I've said this before, and, and Grant, Grant can, can get a shot. He's got a phenomenal mid-range shot. I know you guys are going to be, after 10 games, you're going to say, Porter, you're right. You told us he had a great mid-range. Grant's got a great mid-range game. And uh, he, um, um, but I think you're going to see, you're going to see two guys that are, that have played in a bunch of games that can, that have a confidence to score the ball at this level. Porter, I kind of wanted to ask you about Benny, uh, Los, and Ortega. What do you think their role is going to be early in the season? So there's the three freshmen, and Luke's the other freshman, just to include him, but Luke, just to give an injury report, Luke won't be playing tomorrow night. Uh, he tweaked his ankle. Um, and then just another injury report, so you know, is uh, Bijan is uh, finishing concussion protocol. So he'll be unavailable to, tomorrow. Um, and then our walk on Blake Seacap is, is, is continuing to come back from the Achilles. Um, so the three freshmen that will play tomorrow, um, Milo Suzan, Otega Uwe, and, and Benny Schroeder. So, um, you know, Los is a big, true, natural point guard. He's 6'4". Um, great feel for the game, can pass. Uh, I just think he can get the tempo going. Um, the ball sprays with him, and I think he's really good defender. Um, Otega is another guy that you don't look at as physically doesn't look like a freshman. I mean, his body, I watched his brother racing down guys for the Ravens last night. The athletic de uh, genes that they have, I mean, he, Otega is a very good, strong athlete, defensive, transition, rebounding, cutting, slashing. He can really get to the rim. But I think we've added some pieces that can help our transition game running. You know, Grant can get the ball up, Los, Joe, Otega. I think we've added some guys that can really add to our transition game. I think you're going to see a faster element there. Um, Benny's missed so much, but he's been back the last three weeks. And he's, uh, man, he's, he's trying so hard. He's, it's so hard because he's got a good problem. A good problem is he cares too much. He cares so much that he's be he's too sped up. He wants to do everything, every play to prove that he's caught up, and he does some things every practice that makes every day. You like I can see it. You know, like he's he's coming, he's coming, and uh, but he'll be he'll be available. Uh, he'll be playing tomorrow night. I have time for a couple more questions for you. I was when I was watching uh, Joe on the ceiling in, in, in the practice on, on Friday. I noticed him just. 
trying to be a, book, trying to be a vocal leader and just talk, talking to his teammates and wise. That's something that you know too, just to kind of take that initiative to just be motivated and just be that kind of vocal leader on, on your team. Yeah, I've, I, I have seen him that uh, in him. He's uh, he's um, just got such a great dynamic personality. He and uh, the guys love him and. Um, He's, he smiles. He's got a positive energy. He's not he's not a guy that's always got bad pouting body language. Joe's an upbeat guy, um, and I love that about him. I'm always t saying great defenses are noisy, great teammates are noisy, and Joe's always clapping, hyping up. So I definitely have seen that as well, and, and I love that about Joe, that he's a very vocal player in a positive way. Is that something you try to value in players? Like, I remember talking to, to him and, and then Joe, Joe's dad about, you know, you always just want to try to value the on a team. Is that something you value him before? One hundred percent. I value communication. You know, communication is a skill, and you know, uh, I think it's hard to play this game being quiet. You know, 10, 15 years ago, people might just say, "Oh, that's his personality. He's quiet. He's a quiet player." Well, if you don't evolve, it's hard to play this game being quiet. There's a lot. It's a fast-paced game. You don't have a timeout. Every st there's not a stoppage of the ball. Um, I mean, it's it's you got to be vocal. You got to talk. You got to be a beat and Joe's Joe's a very good communicator and uh, it's definitely something we look at and he's 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 does a great job of that. Sooner Scoop HD